Next year, several reports are saying that Apple's Plus model of the iPhone 10 will be sporting not a second, but a third camera. Moving in the ways of Huawei. The, they're going that uh, joke there. What will that third lens really be used for? Before we go into the actual functional purpose of the third lens, I'd like to mention that there's been some really interesting concepts on how they're going to handle it. And personally, I think that between all the different concepts there are of Apple having a third lens on the back of an iPhone 10 Plus, many of them could look weird if they go in the triangle form. I just don't think it fits in naturally. And on top of that, I think it would require extra sapphire if you actually made the camera bump on the back larger. And on top of that, I'm really hoping Apple at some point can start tackling this camera bump feature because I'm very jealous of the way the Samsung Galaxy camera bump is basically not even there. But if you're adding a third lens to the camera bulge and it's still just getting larger, it's like, ugh, you're not fixing the problem. But anyway, the primary focus of this video is why add a third lens? I think we've got companies that have very different ideas on how you take a quality picture. Of course, it all comes down to personal preference. And quality wise, both cameras like the Pixel 2 can take very detailed and intricate pictures, but so can the Huawei P20 Pro. Even though one of these has one lens, one of these has three, I actually think that the the extra lenses at this point is more about marketing things is a little bit better as in if the Huawei P20 Pro and P20 only had dual cameras or maybe if they only had single lens cameras would that many people be talking about them? Perhaps there would be some people but definitely not as much. I think that adding a third lens helps differentiate yourself from other smartphones and say look we're special we have an advantage but does it have that much effect on the photography? YouTubers like MKBHD who have tested the P20 Pro have said that it can make images too sharp when you have a a chrome lens and a wide angle lens and then of course the telephoto is also just there. This is basically combining two different formats of dual camera we've had in the past where Apple takes the route of wide angle and telephoto, Essential takes the route of color lens and black and white lens and then you merge the pictures together to result in a more crispy image, maybe more detail is brought out of it because it's taking in more data. But the personal reason I think Apple's experimenting with this technology or at least pursuing what that third lens can do is they really need to have some differentiating features between the regular sized iPhone 10 and the Plus model. Many people are upset with this and I kind of get it. A lot of people are saying, well, what if I want these premium features, but I want them in a smaller form factor? A lot of people really did not prefer the size of the 8 Plus or the 7 Plus, but it had that dual camera, it had the better battery life, it had that better pixel print. So they decided to go ahead and put up with that larger design, even though they would much rather have a regular size 7 or 8. Apple, on the other hand, I think sees it a little bit differently and says, if you're paying more for a product, Product, and because of the larger battery, the larger display, the more manufacturing components that go into a plus sized phone, that means they have to charge more. And I think Apple says, well, if we're charging more, we have to let people know that they're getting some more things out of it. And this idea kind of first started all the way back with the iPhone 6. You know, back in those days, we didn't have dual cameras on iPhones yet. This applies to the iPhone 6S lineup as well. But even then, Apple started experimenting with the idea that the plus model phone should have a slight advantage with the camera. And back then, the iPhone 6 Plus had optical image stabilization, so that recording videos was a lot easier, and the regular iPhone 6 did not have that. That way, it's not just a difference in size, but when you pay more, you're actually getting more out of the phone itself. So Apple took this a step further, obviously, with the iPhone 7 Plus, and said, now, if you buy a Plus model phone, you get portrait mode. You get to take these really cool pictures, you get to zoom a lot more in photography, get close-up objects, get a more zoomed-in angle when you're taking certain portraits. Now, not everything's wide angle, because you're paying more. So when you have that plus in the iPhone name, it has to kind of justify itself. And maybe that'll be a problem with this year's lineup of iPhone 10s because this triple lens rumor is not supposed to be coming to the 2018 iPhones. We're talking about 2019 here. And that means while this year, while it's leaked that we're getting that plus sized iPhone six and a half inch display, both the 5.8 inch version and the six and a half inch version will be sporting essentially the same cameras. We already know with the iPhone 10, we have dual optical image stabilization. Camera on the iPhone 10 is the best of any iPhone, and to a lot of people, it's the best camera phone hands down. I understand some people don't think that. Some people do, they're out there. And it sounds like between the Plus model and the regular sized model, they're going to be identical, which Apple actually hasn't done with two different sized iPhones in a while. The idea of having a release of an iPhone with two different sizes, but the only difference is the screen size and the battery. Maybe an extra gig of RAM or something. But for the most part, I think Apple's just kind of dipping their toe in the water with this Plus model iPhone 10 idea, seeing how it's going to sell. And maybe in 2019, 
they're already predicting that maybe the Plus is not going to sell that great this year because rumored to be expensive and people aren't going to be able to justify it. But then it comes back to that camera. That's what's made investing in the Plus model smartphone so justifiable for a lot of people is because they get more out of it. Even with companies like Google who like to say, we don't believe you should have exclusives for choosing a different size variation. There should be no difference. But then they make the Pixel 2 XL look infinitely better than the god ugly giant bezeled regular size Pixel 2. But yeah, there's no difference, right? Companies can't help but do this. I don't blame them. If it costs more to build the phone and you're having to put in more pixels, more battery, more manufacturing components, you're gonna ask people to pay a lot more and a lot of them can't really justify it if there's not some other exclusive they get with buying that more expensive model. I think the primary reason a lot of people probably bought the Pixel 2 XL, the bezels don't look that bad. They don't look great, but you know, they look okay compared to the regular size Pixel 2. For a $650 phone that has those giant of bezels, eh, a lot of people had a hard time investing in that. So what exactly can Apple add to that triple lens setup? I think it makes more sense that they're just going to add it on the side. You know, it's not going to be a part of the camera bum. It definitely makes the back of the phone look even more cluttered than it already does. I suppose they could go the monochrome look, but I think we've seen with cameras like the Essential Phone that that doesn't always really improve the quality of the picture. They could also go the OnePlus 5T route, which is to literally have basically the same exact sensors and same lenses on both cameras, but just combining them both to result in a better picture somehow. Literally just two of the exact same camera, which I thought was odd, but they claim it helps. Or a wild card that would be really kind of out there is to just have a telephoto and an ultra telephoto. So one of these cameras zooms in a little bit, and then the next one zooms in a lot. So currently right now, we basically have a two times telephoto lens on our iPhones. Imagine if you also had a three times or a four times. This would be if Apple was really trying to justify your taking pictures and videos from far away from things. See, with LG and the G7, they really don't think like that. I'm confused why a lot of people think ultra wide lenses are more helpful, because in my opinion, you usually don't run into an instance where you're too close to an object, but you need to take a picture of it. It's like, just back up. It's that simple. Need to take a picture of this great painting. Great, I'll just back up a little bit. And on top of that, most smartphone cameras are fairly wide angle anyway. I think it's far more common that you're at a concert, or the instance for me, I was at a park with my girlfriend and bunnies were hopping onto the trail and chipmunks were running around and you want to get a picture of them, but you don't want to scare them away. So it really helped to have that telephoto lens that was optically stabilized so she could get a really good shot of it without disturbing it. I think zooming in is a far more applicable feature and maybe it's not too out there that Apple would say, okay, telephoto lens for when you do the portrait shots, because in my opinion, when you do portrait mode and you're blurring backgrounds around people's faces, you don't want that to be wide angle. It doesn't look as good unless you're doing macro shots. But also if you want to take pictures of animals or your favorite band playing at a concert and they're very far away, having that ultra zoom lens may be very useful and may help persuade people to invest a little bit more in a plus sized iPhone, just like it did with the iPhone 7. You see, before the iPhone 7, most people were buying the regular size 4.7 inch iPhones. But the 7 was an interesting phase because originally when a lot of people said, I don't want to pay for the 6 plus, it's too big. I can't get used to that. But then when the iPhone 7 plus came around, more people started buying the 7 plus instead of the regular 7. Could we see that conversion again with an iPhone with a six and a half inch display? That would be quite a conversion process to get people from moving to iPhone SE levels, a four inch iPhone, all the way up to six and a half inch because they're getting more camera exclusives. Obviously, as all hardware gets better, the small amount of people this is actually going to matter towards is going to be smaller and smaller and smaller. But I personally would rather see Apple make a super telephoto lens for shooting stuff that's far away because I keep running into that instance whenever I'm taking pictures. I want to get closer to something, but I can't. There's a guardrail or I don't want to bother that thing. So I think it'd be interesting to see a three times, four times, screw it, even a five times telephoto zoom where you don't lose any data out of that picture. It's still the same megapixel size as the other lenses. But then of course you still have that regular telephoto when you want to take basic portrait shots. But you know, you don't need to take a picture of someone when they're 50 feet away from you. Or maybe you will with this super telephoto lens. It will be the stalker camera. But of all the different possibilities of a third lens on an iPhone, that's what I would like to see. You may disagree. What would you like to see put into a third lens camera or do you not want this at all? Would you rather Apple just stay with two cameras or go the pixel route and say one's good enough? All that glorious feedback, let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.